Hello YouTube, this is Basic Chemistry's first SAT Chemistry video and as you can see this video will cover the 1998 SAT Chemistry test which was released by College Board. Now let's start with this first page. So number one, equipment needed to determine the half-life of carbon-14. So carbon-14 Alright, so there's an isotope of carbon that is radioactive. Now, among the choices here, the only tool that is related to measuring the alpha ray emitted by this carbon-14 is a Geiger counter. So it's just D. Number two, equipment needed for measuring the vapor pressure of a liquid. Now, measuring vapor pressure. Among these choices, these choices, the only thing related to measuring pressure is probably the manometer. So what a manometer is, it's basically a tool that you use to measure pressure. So let me draw a quick diagram. So therefore, the answer would be C. <coughs> Number three, equipment needed for measuring the volume of a solution that is delivered. Now, we know that calorimeter is a device used to measure heat energy, so it's not calorimeter. Manometer, no. It's used to measure pressure, Geiger counter, nope. It's to measure the alpha rays and voltmeter, nope. So the obvious answer would be A. And the reason is that a burette is a device oops, that you use in titrations to deliver the exact amount of liquid. So it kind of looks like this. There's a clamp here, and then there's this a valve here that you can control and there's like tiny increments here so a burette would be the only choice for number three and number four equipment needed to determine the heat of reaction and this is obviously the calorimeter because a calorimeter um, contains many different um, measuring tools that can be used to measure the heat energy it should be the calorimeter. Number five, equipment needed for measuring the potential of a cell. Now that's a voltmeter. So any galvanic cell. I mean, there's a salt bridge there. And the anode of the cathode. And the voltmeter will be here to measure the flow of electrons. Right, like that. However, questions related to electrochemistry will not be covered in the more recent exams, as some of you may have noticed that in your most recent um, SAT chemistry textbooks, electrochemistry is not mentioned. So let's move on to number six. It can be expressed as grams per milliliter. So let's see. Boiling point? Nope. It's related to temperature rate of reaction? Nope. Molecular mass? Nope. Molarity is measured by x moles over 1 liter. Density is measured by mass over volume. Now because gram is a unit of mass and milliliter is a unit of volume, the answer would be E. Number seven, can be expressed as grams per mole. Now, this one, this one is, this one should be the molecular mass. And that is because if you look at the periodic table, for example, for fluorine, the atomic mass is about 19 grams. So in one mole of fluorine, 
there's 19 grams. So it can be written like that. So it should be the molecular mass. And number eight. Does not vary with changes of temperature and pressure. Now, boiling point obviously does vary with temperature and pressure because um, because as you have lower pressure, your boiling point will decrease, and as you have higher pressure, your boiling point will increase because boiling means um, a vapor pressure of water has to be equal to the atmospheric. Um, pressure so it's definitely not boiling point definitely not rate of reaction and it's definite it may be mole it may be molecular mass and it's definitely not molarity because remember molarity is x moles over one liters and if the pressure and the temperature is changed then the um, the volume would change as well so it's not molarity it's not density as well because the volume also can be changed by temperature and pressure, so the answer will be C. Number nine, is the quantity necessary to determine the molecular formula of the compound? So let's see. Let's say that we have a, we have an ethene, so we have an ethene, and to determine the molecular formula of this, we definitely do not need the boiling point. We don't need the rate of reaction. We don't need the molec- uh, we may need the molecular mass, so let's save this. We don't need the molarity, we don't need the density. So it should be C. And this is because to determine the molecular mass of ethene, you have to know the- you have to know the molar mass of carbon and hydrogen, which is each 12. So the mo molecular mass of ethene should be 12 times 2 plus 1 times 4 and that's 24 plus 4 which is 28 so an ethene is 20 gram, 28 grams per mole so number 10 to 12 let's move on has the electron configuration like so so from this we can know that the substance we're looking for has 10 and 18 so we, the substance we're looking for has 28 electrons oops actually sorry that should be 10 and yep it should be 24 electrons let's see if we, uh, iron usually has 26 electrons but it's ion has 24 electrons so it should be A. Number 11, has a noble gas electron configuration. This question is asking for a substance that has eight valence electrons because all noble gases have eight valence electrons except for helium, which still has a full shell, but it just has two valence electrons. Now, um, if you take neon, for example, two, three, four, five, six, seven, There's eight electrons there, so we need to find an ion or an element that has eight valence electrons. So let's see. Iron. Now iron does not have um, a cation of iron that has an oxidation state of two plus does not have um, a full shell because oxygen uh, iron has twenty six electrons. And even if it loses two electrons, it will not have a full shell. And chlorine is a is a halogen, so and, uh, all halogens have seven valence electrons. So if I quickly draw what what chlorine looks like, it has seven valence electrons, and because it does not have a it does not have a full shell, so it's not chlorine. Let's look at potassium. Potassium is an alkaline metal, and all alkaline metal has one valence electron, hence they are very reactive. So if I just draw... And 
and one more will be like this. Mm -hmm. So this is potassium um, in its elemental form. Now the answer says K plus, uh, which is a cation of potassium that has an oxidation state of plus one. So plus one, that means that we get rid of one electron, and if we do that, this whole shell will disappear because um, one electron was all this shell had. And if we get rid of that, we get a full shell, so it should be C. And number 12 has electrons at F orbitals, so an element that has electrons in F orbital orbitals should be the heaviest one. So if you look at all these choices, or, or rather the one with the most atomic, uh, the one with the highest atomic number, and if you just look at the word choices, you can immediately know that the answer would be E or gold. So number 13, methyl alcohol. So methyl alcohol basically has, basically just looks like this with three hydrogens attached. And we know that alcohols are polar substances, so number 13 should be C. And number 14, carbon tetrachloride. So carbon tetrachloride, if you draw its structure, it looks like this. And although, and although this bond, the carbon-chlorine bond, is polar, it has four bonds, four symmetrical bonds. Although they are polar because they have two symmetrical, or two, rather two bonds in the opposite direction, they cancel each other. And the same applies here. Hence, it is a non-polar covalent bond. It also has a tetrahedral structure and um, sub and molecules with tetrahedral structure is um, they're all non-polar covalent so it should be non-polar covalent. And cesium. Cesium is an alkali metal and alkali metal is basically a metallic substance that has all properties of a metal so it should be that. And strontium chloride. So strontium chloride or rather SrCl2. Um, it's a combination of a strontium cation and two Cl minuses. Or uh, two Cl minus anions. And we, we know that it involves the transfer of electrons, so it should be a ionic substance. So that's it for this video and I will be back for the next video to cover the rest of the numbers. So if you have any questions, remember, please leave a comment down below and I will try my best to answer them.